What's up, divas? What's up, divos? It's your girl. You guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. It's really actually Tuesday. And it's late in the day Tuesday. It's 4.50 p.m. Let me tell you something. Normally, I get a jump start on this Real Talk on Tuesday mornings because I just like to... I don't know. I, I like to keep busy all day. It's not, not really. Let me stop. I don't really like to keep busy all day, but I have so much to do that I try to get things done really early. But today, you know, me and my daughter Tati and my son Wuzzle and my grandson Tinky Man, we was hanging out. We went to the beauty supply store, you know, like in the hood. Well, it's not really the hood to me. Like, I don't consider that to be the hood, but other people would probably consider it to be the hood. But they don't really know what the hood is. But anyway, you know, those are the good beauty supply stores. We went there, I got some things from there. So you guys hear that freaking dog? Okay, so that little bastard of a dog is always yapping. And me personally, I feel like it's so rude and disrespectful to all the other neighbors. Like, you don't never want to bring your dog in. Your dog just yapping. All times of the day more in the afternoon. So, therefore, whenever I'm doing a video, I definitely have to close my balcony door because, you know, I can hear the little motherfucker. And it's so crazy because the dog is like this fucking big. If you walk through the grass in the back of my house, it starts barking. It's just like, listen, little, little motherfucker, shut up before I pull you through that goddamn fence, okay? Just shut the hell up. And... It's just to be annoying. It's like to be annoying. And I'm, I, I think one day I'm just going to take it upon my goddamn self and go a walk around the corner because she lives around the corner, but her backyard is right there. Her back is right there. And just knock on her fucking door and tell her to tell that yapping ass little dog to shut the hell up. It's annoying. Like literally it's annoying. But anyway, so we went to the bath, to the bath and body works. Okay. So I did go there again. We went to the beauty supply store and I got some things from there, you know, that I, I I could use. Not like I really needed it, but, you know, I could use. So I got some things from there. Then we went to DD's Discount. I don't really know how popular DD's Discount is, but it's a chain store out here in Arizona. And to me, it reminds me of like, okay, so we have Marshalls and Home Goods. We have TJ Maxx. Then there's... um. Ross, which is part of their sister family. And they have some other little affiliate stores that are a little bit lower class than them. I'm thinking that Dee Dee's, I'm not really sure, but I feel, I feels like Dee Dee's is part, Dee Dee's discount is part of like one of those Marshalls and AJ Wright or a TJ Maxx chains. Cause it kind of reminds you of them. They have like the, they have like some house goods. They have like the same type of stuff, but you know, they don't have like the best of stuff. Like I did see the BB stuff there, you know, B, B, whatever that brand is called, Bay Bay, B, 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 E, B, E. I did see some stuff like that there. You don't really find like top name brands, but if you have one, and excuse me, but I'm eating mints. I love these dinner mints. They're so freaking good. But if you have a DD's, just, it's just two letters, D and D, DD's and S, DD's discounts. Look it up. Go there because they have like the best bras ever and they're so inexpensive. So this is what it's called. Ladies discounts. And I'm not really sure how popular it is, but you can you can look it up. DDsdiscounts.com and you can find out where they're at. I'm not a big fan of their clothing. I don't even bother looking through it. I don't really care about their handbags neither. Some of the household stuff is cool, but their bras and panties. Listen. Um, I'm sorry I'm smacking. I'm sorry I'm smacking. I'm not a big Victoria's Secrets girl because, for one, I don't really like the straps of their bras. Um, I have some Victoria's Secrets bras, but their straps be so thin. They be, they be digging in my skin. You know what I mean? Like, I can't take that. So, I need, like, wide straps. So, I have, like, a million black bras, and all the straps is, like, really wide like this. Um, but also... For the backs, I like to at least have four hooks. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like for my bras in the back to be kind of wide. Not a little two hooks. One hook here and one hook there. But then my fat meat be rolling over. And it just does, it's not supportive enough. So, I don't really fuck with Victoria's Secrets because of those reasons. And I really feel like they should have stuff. Because there's some big titty women that shop there. And I don't know how y'all take that fucking bra strap digging in your skin. 
and the back's not being wide enough. So anyway, I like to go to Dee Dee's because they have some good bras for really inexpensive. And I'm not really sure how, you know what I'm saying, popular name brands are, but they got some good ass bras. Now this bra looks too fucking big for my goddamn titties. Um, and it says it's a 38D. And I should have got a 36D, but I couldn't find one. But whatever. Now, see, these have three hooks in the back. And I like the fact that they have three hooks in the back. I really prefer four, but I'll take three versus two. When I say three, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to hook that shit three times in order to, for your bra to be fastened. Because the backs is nice and wide. So, I like my bras to be... Like, nice and big like that in the back with some nice, healthy-looking straps. So, as I was saying, these bras are fairly inexpensive. This one here is was original price, retail price only was $24. At Dee Dee's, it's $5.99. Okay? Now, hopefully this fucker fits because... I don't know. I just hope it fits. So, I got a peach one. And I got this black one here. This is a different name brand. This one was retail at $24. And it was $5.99 as well. Okay. Nice. Cute. Nice, nice bras, too. Nice bras. You know, with the big straps and stuff on them. Have a nigga work to get that shit off. Okay. Yes. And then, um, let's see. Another one. I got like a million black bras. I'm like, seriously, that's the only color I've really brought. I really like to wear. This one right here. And I like my bras to be like higher up right here. Because if you get them higher up, your titties are like really squished together. So I like that. This one was $5.99 as well. And then you get two packs. You get a two-piece too. And I was really trying to find more in my size for the two pieces. But hunties, I really couldn't find too many. So I got this right here, this two-piece, two-pack for $6.99. Okay? $6.99 for two of them. And they're really nice. Nice padded, nice underwire. Um... Now the straps on only the only thing about this though is the straps are right here are thin, but the back is three. So I guess you know I'll just I'll just I'll just deal with that. So I got these bras, really good price, and they're supportive. And I get them for my daughter Nay. I go to, for my fifteen year old to go there and get her bras because she wears um a double D, um like a like a 34 double D, she's 15, so she wears like a double D, 40, a, a something D, double D. And so I could find her good bras, and she likes the same thing. She likes to have enough straps in the back, and she likes her straps to be thick right here. So anyway, I got those, and then you can get some panties to match. Look at that. Three-piece pack of underwear, panties, for $5.99. And what's so crazy about it is, look at that, matches this or this one. The black right there. And then this, okay, so we got peach for this. We got the black for the black ones. And we got the beige for the beige bra. Crazy, right? But then also, I needed a red one. I had a red bra. There we go. Another three pack, $5.99. And it comes with beige, black, and red. This is not for me, okay? Not at all. Y'all motherfuckers know what this is for. I'm about to be out next week, Thursday. Bitch, want to have some real, real nice lingerie. I mean, I do already, but I'm just saying, entice them. So that was what I did today, me and the kids. And also, we went to the Mexican Mall. And I figured, since I was in the Mexican Mall, why not stop at Bath and Body Works? Because I just want to see what they got, you know? Well, they put some new stuff out. Almond milk. Face and Body Refresher. Rose Water Face and Body Refresher. These were both 75% off. So it is $4.63. This one here, the Aki Berry. Same price. I got six of them. There's one for Tati. I said one. Okay. She didn't want the um, almond. I mean, if she really wants this, I'll give her two. Either way. I'll, I'll hold on to it for her. And now this smells really good. So I got two of these. The Coco Shea. This is nice. Nourishly Riching with butter, Body Butter. It smells so good. 
Mm -hmm. This smells so good. Amazing. Yeah, so I got two of those. And this aromatherapy recharge sage and mint body wash. I didn't see a um anything to um match with it. It was on the shelves next to this here, but I don't really care because as long as I'm clean. Now also I went to the post office to mail up a wig and also I did get something here from Go Go Co Go Go Co Shea. I think that's how you say it. So she sent me uh, one of her items. And let me tell you, when I opened it, I was like, what is that smell? Okay, so this is the Whipped Healing Butter. And it is Go Go Co Shea. Okay, at Go Go Co Shea. And this is um, Healing Butter. And this is, I don't know, this is some kind of oil. Let me tell you guys, it's like some type of oil. This stuff smells so fucking good. I don't remember speaking with her. You know, she probably just found my email address, I mean, my, my postal address, and decided to send it to me. But I'm so glad that she did because this stuff, it's like an oil. Oh, my God. Whatever she puts in here, this stuff smells so good. So her name is Slim and Bougie, and she got her phone number here. Girl, I'm about to I'm about to text you and tell you I got this stuff. This stuff smells so good. And I haven't smelled this. Oh, okay. I don't really know. Um. Okay. Well, I'm really not sure if this is supposed to look like this, but. Um, I'll just pass on this because it's a mess. It's kind of messy, but, and no, no, you know, not hating or anything. Um, but I will tell you guys this. What the hell is the paper towel? Hmm. Hold on, guys. Okay, so I apologize about that. Um, no shade or anything, but I really did think this was something hard and solid in here. It just looked like shea butter. Um, and then when I opened it up, it just is a mess all over the place. But I will say this, that this stuff right here, this was kind of messy too, because there wasn't a top on here. Um, so when I opened the packaging up, it was all over, but Everybody at the post office was like, whatever that is, it smells really good. And I was like, right? So, yes, this smells amazing, okay? So, I'll definitely check out her website or her Instagram, see what she got going on. Yeah. But, so, yeah, that's that's about it. So, you guys, we're not going to waste too much time talking to Yipper and Yapper because there's really something that I really want to do. Well, I want to do this, too. But I really want to do like a couple of videos today, some synthetic wigs, um, just to get them prepared. You know, I like to prepare. I like to do things ahead of time. That's what I do. And then I just, you know, I, I do like six or seven videos in a day. Normally that's on the weekend, but being that I don't really feel like doing it on the weekend and I got some time, I'm going to try to do it today. So we're going to get into this real talk. If you have a real talk situation that you need handled, you know what I'm saying? You can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line real talk as well as that is if you want to change the names of the people that you are referring to in the email, please let me know, girl, bitch, whatever you want to call me. Well, let's not really take it too far. That I have already went ahead and changed the names also as well as that if you don't do that, I'm going to automatically assume or I might just change it for you. So on that note, let's get into this real talk, you guys. And yeah, that's about it. Huh? 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 What? Huh? Huh? All right, you guys. So, dear Miss April, good day to you. My name is Mitt. First, I must tell you how much I enjoy your program, The Real Talk. She called it The Real Talk. The Real Talk. I should just, you know what? I like that. That sounds better than Real Talk. The Real Talk. The Real Talk. I listen every Wednesday while I am at work. I do house cleaning, and thanks to you, Real Talk has helped make, make, 
helped has helped make the cleaning easier because I laugh like crazy while I work. Okay, my story is long as hell. I'm living here in America for almost four years now, and I am from the Caribbean. I met my husband on a dating site, and he came to my country several times, and we dated until six months after he asked me to marry him. I got married to him months after that. I knew to myself that I was looking an opportunity. I was going to, looking for an opportunity for a better life, and I always heard about the American dream. I wanted a life so to get a husband was even better. He was everything wonderful to me at first until he filed for me and my daughter, which is my only child. When I came here, everything changed. For one, he hides how much money he receives. He even went to the supermarket by himself. He used to give me $100 each month until I found his paycheck, which was $4,000. I nearly passed out. Although he may have two small children with an ex, he is used to giving her $650 a month. He owns his own home and rents the basement part out, and that covers the mortgage. It was rough for me because I cook each day clean and I make sure his clothes are clean. I had to argue with him to let me go out and buy the groceries. And so I finally started looking for a job once I was able to get my work permit. When I told him, he said he didn't want me to work. And I told him, um, I have to because I can't be on a budget of $100. On the day of my interview, I asked him to wake me up and he snuck out and he went to work. I had to call him and when I did, I cursed him out. So he came back for me. I ended up work I ended up working with a cleaning company for a few months until I decided to print some business cards and try my own thing. It was hard, but it paid off. My husband has changed from bad to worse since I started doing my own business. He started to watch my money. He even gave me three bills to pay, and I don't have a problem to pay bills, but the bills are carried in the rent. Everything is included, lights and water, but yet I have to pay that outside of my own pocket in full. He has three tenants, so why am I paying for everyone? If I don't buy food, the house will be empty. I have to buy deodorant for him, bath soap for him to bathe and wash his ass, toothpaste for him to brush his teeth, tissue to wipe his funky ass, and etc. He is the one that pays the car insurance, but since I credited a car in December, meaning she bought a car in December, he told me that I have to pay $100 now each month, probably for the car insurance. I was paying for our cell phone bills for two years for $70 each month, and then I told him, let's split the bill. This month I will pay, and next month is your turn, so I would pay half, and he would pay half. FYI, I also... FYI, also to this agreement, he told me, hell no, he is not paying anything of the bill, of the cell phone bill. I'm tired of him. Honestly, he even quit his job. He has his skills as a trade person, so sometimes he will get a bathroom to renovate or to fix heating or the AC or painting, etc. So he has his skills. When she says he has his skills as a trade person, basically like a handyman, he could fix things and stuff like that. But when he is home and I ask him to come help me clean at work, I have to pay him and buy him lunch. What hurts me is he does not even buy me a bunch of flowers on my birthday or anniversary. I have to curse him or remind him. He even stopped giving me the $100 a month since I have a job. I am so confused. I feel turned off. Not even sex can I have with him. I try to make this marriage work, but it seems hopeless. For Christmas, I got gift cards, and I took him and my daughter shopping. I never bought a thing for myself. He gave me $100, and he took it back because he helped me clean this week. And he wanted the big oxtails for lunch each day, along with juice and a bun. Juice and a bun. Juice and bun. I only bought a small lunch for myself. I am so lost, Miss April, and the story has not even begun. Please tell me what to do because I am losing my mind. I just feel like I am paying him back for the green card he gave me and my daughter, and I tried to talk to him, but he does not have any reasoning abilities. Once we start to argue, he tells me about my past. My body shuts down for him, and here I am waiting on your advice as, uh, as a worried mind mixie. Thanks for reading. P.S. What makes matters worse is he is a Christian. 
Okay, so basically, you know, Christy is from the Caribbean, so she's only been in America four years. So her English is not, she's got some good writing skills, but you can tell that, you know, she's still learning, which is fine because I understand her. Basically, she's married this man that she met on a dating website. After six months, you know, he asked her to marry him. A few months after that, they got married. He filed for the green cards for her and her daughter, and she moved over here. Once he got over here, you know, she got over here. He didn't want her working. He gave her $100 um, allowance each month. He did all the grocery shopping, did all the bill payings. He had a good job. He owns his own home. He gives his ex-wife $650 a month for child support. He rents out his basement to three tenants, which pays for their mortgage. So what's the problem? She want to find a job. $100 ain't kicking in, especially when she found his pay stuff of $4,000. Okay. So the bitch almost passed the fuck out. Let me tell you something. Seems like once you got your job and then you started running your own cleaning business, Mr. Um, Mr. America, Mr. American or Mr. America thought that, you know, it's best for him now to put his feet up. So you may feel like, you know, Mitzi, you may feel like, hey. Okay, so that was my son Muzzle. He needed some. Okay, so honestly, you feel like you paying him back for the green card and shit. Let me tell you something, Mitzi. I feel like he brought you and your daughter over here so he can have himself like what do you call those mail order brides when you buy a bride through the mail that was like back in the days they would meet them in the catalogs or online or not even online but they was called mail order brides because they would just be some shit like basically you didn't order her up she from a foreign country she's gonna come over here and do your dirty work meaning she's gonna cook clean fuck and all of that stuff whatever you want to call it because you done got her your green her green card now he done got you over here and now he's he's feeling like you know, he's the bitch and you're the man. Of the this is how I'm looking at it, like, like just straight up. I'm just going to be really blunt about it. First of all, you got yourself a lazy, good for nothing son of a bitch. Okay. So for one, he brought your ass over here because he wanted you to use, he wanted to use you. Yeah. You got your green card. Thanks to him. That's great. But here's one thing you don't, send for somebody. You don't ask somebody to marry you. I'm pretty sure he had, maybe he had some good intentions when he first asked you to marry him. However, now that he's got you over here in America, it seems like he's just using you. He's got you like some type of worker slave. And on top of that, now he's reaping from your benefits. Yeah, it's great. Husband and wife are supposed to be a team. We supposed to work together. We supposed to pay bills together, but it seems like he ain't paying a goddamn thing. He got his feet up. He done quit his motherfucking job. He got you buying him lunch. He got to get paid when he go to work with you. Your business is more less his business, meaning y'all a family, a unit, and your cleaning business is part of the family. You shouldn't have to pay your husband to come help you clean. You clean in people's homes and shit because if you don't, you're not going to have anywhere to live. You're not going to have any electricity. You're not going to have any food on the table. You're not going to have any car insurance. You're not going to have any cell phones. Let me tell you something, Misty. It's one thing to be brought in this country, but this is not what America is the fuck about. And when you come to America and you meet a man that was good to you and then months later he turns around and he's a turncoat and he's a totally different person, then that's when you got to stop and realize, did this motherfucker bring me over here because he just wanted me to be his fuck buddy or his fuck slave, his cooking slave, bathe him, massage him, wash his clothes and all of this shit because I'm going to tell you what. I wouldn't give a fuck if you brought me over from fucking Mars, okay? I'm not about to be your motherfucking slave, all right? Now, here's the thing. You got your own business. You done got along so well in this country for the past four years, so you know your way around somewhat in a good way, you know what I'm saying, where you're living at. You you running your own business, and that's that's a lot. When somebody comes from another country and then they open their own business, regardless, regardless of what it is, if it's cleaning, if it's a grocery store, it doesn't matter. You got a good head on your shoulder. Now, here's the thing. I'm not about to sit around and be miserable with somebody because they got me a motherfucking green card, okay? That's not about to happen. I'm not about to let no man mooch off of me. That's not about to happen. You don't want to have sex with him, so you can't even tell me that the dick is good. I'm sorry, but even if the dick was good, I don't give a fuck how good the dick is. It ain't worth me busting my ass while you sit up here and reap the benefits. Now, God forbid, like, this is just the other part of me because you didn't say anything about sex. You did say that you don't want to have sex with him, which means you ain't having sex with him, but I'm, I guarantee you, sweetheart, if he's treating you like a mule, meaning a mule, a motherfucking mule, that I guarantee you that the nigga is dicking somebody the fuck else, okay, that he has more respect for. And it's pathetic how men could treat women like they feel like because they done brought you over here from another country or from another motherfucking planet, and they feel like it's okay to dog you the fuck out, like they did you this big, holy motherfucking favor. Let me tell you something, motherfucker. 
thanks for the green card, but you actually really didn't give me the green card. The motherfucking United States of America gave me the green card, okay? I had to pass some motherfucking test to get up in this motherfucking country. You helped me get in here by being like what you call those people that, you know, you do need some someone over in another country to help you get over. However, nigga, you don't owe me. You don't own me, all right? Thanks for the green card, but that is not a green card, a pass, go card, a pass just to fucking treat somebody like shit. Like, it feels like, it seems like a motherfucker will give somebody, like, you know what I'm saying? You meet a woman, y'all get together, and then they're not from this country, and then you get them a green card, a motherfucking green card, and you feel like that green card is a, a pass to treat them like shit. Like, no, that, it doesn't work like that. It's not like that. You don't owe anybody any type of fucking excuse or, or not even excuse, but you don't owe him any explanation as to why you don't want to do this for him or why you don't want to do that for him and why he should pay for a bill this month or why you should pay for a bill that month. But it's a 50, 50 relationship. Okay. It's a 50, 50 relationship. And my thing is this, um, how to text my husband back. It's a 50, 50 relationship. If one person can't make a payment, then the next person will. But it's 50-50, not 80-20, okay? When you're in a relationship with somebody and they make you feel so miserable so that you don't even want to do anything, you don't even want to be around them, that's when you know that it's time to leave. Regardless of the fact that he got you or he helped you, he helped you and your daughter come to America. Let me tell you, there are many other agencies in America that can continue to help you further your shit, meaning get your citizenship, further your living situation here. You don't have to rely on him. And that's what he's doing. He's he makes it he's making it feel like to me in my eyes, he's making it seem like, well, I got you a green card, I got your daughter a green card, I'm gonna treat you any other type of way. My um, this motherfucking green card, this is not really a green card, it's a cricket card. Um, this this motherfucking green card is a pass for me to treat you like shit because if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't get a green card. Okay, dude, you did play a a part in helping me and my daughter get a green card, but you're not about to ridicule me and humiliate me and downsize me. You, you're not about to treat me like I don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you. Just like you said, when you try to talk to him, there's no reasoning. It's not even worth it. I wouldn't even bother, sweetheart. You got your cleaning business and he don't have no job, okay? All he has is them three tenants in the basement. That's fine. They paying the bills, so at least he'll have somewhere to live. But how's he going to eat and what other bills he got to pay? Let me tell you something. I would hurry up and get my own phone line, okay? Get your own motherfucking phone line. Cricket, look, this is Cricket. I got Cricket. It ain't no contract, but, you know, I pay for it monthly. I ain't got no minutes, nothing like that, but you know what I'm saying? I have, get your own phone line. If you have not had your own bank account and you have a bank account with him, honey, get your own bank account, get your own shit because there's no room for error. There's no room for any man treating any woman like shit. I don't give a fuck if he was from Russia, Afghanistan, Africa, Mars, Pluto, Jupiter. There's no room for any man to treat any woman like shit and vice versa. Just because you have come from your country to here and he has helped you does not give him any fucking authority, entitlement to walk all over you and treat you like you are some fucking slave. And if he even dares to try to pull up the fact that he helped you get a green card, the key fact, the key word is you helped. You helped. You didn't give me the motherfucker. You helped. All right? You helped. Listen, when you come from another country... And you come to America, you're supposed to be happy. It's supposed to be amazing. It's supposed to be a blessing. It's supposed to be something different, something new, something just beautiful for you. Okay? That's what I hear. All right? I'm from here, so I don't know. But you left your country to be with this person. You left your country because you said the American dream. So the American dream is supposed to be like you got part of it, getting your own business and doing your own thing. Not having some man treat you like a pawn of scum. 
Okay. There are so many men out there in the world and I'm not saying that you got to run out there and chase them, but here's the thing. Life is too short, sweetheart. And for one, it's a blessing that you and your daughter are here. For two, it's a blessing that you and your daughter got your um, green cards. And for three, let me tell you something. You in America, you happy, you got your own business. Keep doing you. It's time to move the fuck on. Now, here's one thing. He might try to be indignant and try to be really aggressive with, oh, well, I helped you do this and I helped you do that. But you're not even helping me do anything now. And you're not even helping yourself. Okay. Sometimes we got to run quick before we even look back. Meaning sometimes if we run slow, we got time and we got a chance to look back. And then we got a time to think about the shit like, hmm. He's so good to me. I love him. You know what I'm saying? He did help me get over here. That's when I say run and run quick. Because if you run quick, you ain't got time to look back and think about the shit that y'all been through, the good or the bad. If you running slow, that's when you're thinking about that shit and then your ass just fucking turn around and go back to where the fuck you started from. I commend you because you have come over here from the Caribbean and you and your child and you have started your own business. But now it's time you have seen, you have had a piece of the American pie, sweetheart, and you have had the piece that is rotted the fuck out. So the one thing that you need to do when these things are rotten, we throw the shit out. When shit is rotten, we throw it out. And here's my thing. Get the fuck out before he puts you the fuck out. Because remember, that's his home. He owns his home. And it's not cool to be thrown out. But however this, you can just let him know if he was to throw you out. Bitch, I've been thrown out of better places than this. And trust me, you throwing me out of here is not hurting me, but it's doing me a huge favor. So if I were you, I would put my money aside. I would get my own phone line. I will have my own car insurance on my own, my car on my own car insurance. So that way he could pay his shit. You could pay your shit and you can continue to go on your merry way and you can get your own shit. You ain't got to live in a house. But what you do need to have is something for you and your daughter. You've come here for the American dream. And the first thing with the American dream is to have your own. And right now you don't have that. The only thing that you have your own is your own cleaning business. You don't even got your own peace of mind. You need to have your own. Even if it's a fucking hole in the wall apartment or a studio, it's yours. So say goodbye to fucking American men. Or at least some of them because he's a true fucking asshole. Okay, so we're gonna go on to the next one. Hold on. I got all, I'm getting text messages. I'm getting I love you, mamas, from my son. Like, just, okay. Hi, April. Hi, April. First of all, I'd like to say from watching your personality, you seem like such a cool person. I'm cool. I also love your family videos too. Family is so important. Anyway, I don't want to make this too long, but I really need some friendly encouragement in my life. I have one sister who doesn't speak to me. Not sure why, and my parents died years ago. I'm really writing this letter because I have rheumatoid arthritis. I was diagnosed at the age of 27, and I'm now almost 39 in March. Every day is a struggle. The pain is so intolerant at times. Still through all the pain, I managed to finish college. Although I went to school for computer science, I had to give that up. I now have a hand I now have hand deformities from having no insurance over a year's time. Now I work as a parking attendant full time. April, I'm so self conscious about my hands and people say some of the meanest, rudest things about my deformity, like I have no feelings. I don't cry because it only gives me a headache. I try to keep myself looking nice, but despite that, I feel that all people see are my hands and not the great person I am. It's not like I've asked for this. I get so depressed and I've had to give up so much of the real me to adjust to this disease. Friends and dating are basically not existent, non-existence. How can I get people to see me for me? Some words of encouragement would mean everything. P.S. I just love your family videos and... And girl, your wigs are always on point. I think you're so beautiful. Thank you. How can I find out when you're doing another wig seal? I always find out afterwards. Keep being awesome. Oh, and you can use my real name, Candy. So Candy, first of all, uh, to be very blunt about my wig sales, um, if you're talking about the synthetic wig lot sales, I do those every few months. So if you want to send me another email with your phone number, then I do have customers that like to know about when I'm having my synthetic lot sale. So that way I inform them ahead of time and they be ready. Or also, you know, if you want a wig, that I'm, you can always send me an email and be like, girl, what wig you making? What wig are you making this week? 
and I send you a picture of them and they don't go on the website. They just go, you know, you can purchase it without it being put on the website. So I get a lot of them like that. So unfortunately, Candy, I think that's what she said her name is, right? Yes, Candy. Um, Candy is almost 39. She has rheumatoid arthritis. And if you guys know what arthritis is, like I have arthritis in my right knee. And it does bother me sometimes. So that's the main reason why I go out and I go on for walks every day. But I have seen people suffer from rheumatoid arthritis. And it's not like a bad deformity. I don't I wouldn't want to even call it a deformity because it's a part of life. It's a person. You are this person. This is what has happened to you. Nobody is perfect. But you know, when you have rheumatoid arthritis, you know, a lot of people, a lot of times, just with regular arthritis, I've seen older women who have arthritis in their hands and their hands are like stiff or they're stuck. Now, as for rheumatoid arthritis, I really can't tell you if I've ever seen anyone with it. However, I just feel like this, you know what I'm saying? It's unfortunate, Candy, that people are so mean in the world, but you know what? That's what makes the world go round, unfortunately. And I know that's not a nice thing to say or it's not an easy thing to say, but it's the truth people as much as we would like for people to just be just like genuine and just have morals and a heart some of them are just so fucking evil and i and i'll say this because i have dealt with so much shit as just being on youtube with people talking shit about my teeth you know what i'm saying like i don't know my teeth are like messed up like and that hurt me so bad it, it would hurt me a lot so I would kind of like adjust to it not really even adjust to it but I wouldn't smile like you know when you would see me smile for a big video you would never see my teeth because I just felt so ashamed and I would always like criticize myself even worse because my teeth just made me feel so uncomfortable they will say things about my daughter Mumsy's weight, that, you know, she's overweight and just things like that. So people in general are just so cruel. And it's just unfortunate that there are people like that. But then when there are unfortunate people that are cruel, because these people are unfortunate that are cruel. Then we have people that are like ourselves who are just as nice and as sweet as can be. I think like what people, you know what I'm saying, who are just mean in general for no fucking reason, it's just that they're miserable within themselves and they're lonely because there's no reason to make fun of anybody who has anything different about them. And I'm not, when I say different, I mean different because I can't say wrong because who said that? You are not supposed to look like that. Who said that what you look like is wrong? Who said that what I look like is right? Who said that? You know what I'm saying? No, we're different. We're all different. And it's just a shame that people in general can be so cruel and make fun of people that are different. However, those people that are just mean and evil like that, they're just miserable in general with themselves and their life. And finding other ones and other people to pick at and be little makes them feel good. And that's sad that this is the truth. But when you find someone who likes to pick at someone who likes to be mean to them and likes to just make fun of them, these people are normally miserable with themselves and they don't have anything to do. They don't have a clue in life. They're lonely. And whether you think they're lonely or not, you may feel like they think that you may feel like their life is happy because you, you may not see anything wrong with them. On the inside, internally, there's something definitely going on and that we don't know. A lot of people suffer from, not even depression, but a lot of people suffer from things that they went through in life, traumas, you know. A lot of people suffer from, like, you know, as kids, somebody in their family might have died or they might have been bullied. So in return, this is how they retaliate with the world. This is what they know. This is how what makes them feel good. And they feel like just treating somebody else wrongfully like this is going to make their life easier. But in reality... It's not. They're just cruel and mean. And, you know, I, I used to, I, honestly, I used to really get bothered by a lot of things like my teeth or my scar right here. I would hate for fucking people to be like, what is that scar on your chest? You just answered your own motherfucking question. A scar, bitch. Why do you have to be so detailed about what the fuck it is? Do you really think it's your business? Maybe when I feel like telling you, I'll tell you. Or my teeth or just anything. Oh, I didn't know you had freckles. When, why? You know, just all kind of things. So, And it used to bother me a lot. And I would just be so self-conscious about a lot of things. And then I had to realize, you know something? These same motherfucking people that are talking shit about me, they don't take care of me. They damn sure don't make me happy. They don't make my world go around. They don't make my life happy. They don't make 
uh, my world spin. They don't do anything for me but irritate me. And for that, I don't like to be around people that irritate me. So I just, you know, for me, like, I, I have tr I have avoided a lot of things in life. Like when I say a lot of things, like I don't really have too many friends. Um, I have one friend um, and she actually lives. Well, I have two friends. I have my best friend and then I have my friend Devin and I have two friends and I kind of like limit myself, limit myself. No, excuse me. I have three friends because my friend Shay. I limit myself on who I deal with because I don't. I just try to avoid as much conflict and drama in my life, and I feel like certain things like that just bring negativity to me. Also, I have just learned to deal with certain things. Like you know, what I'm saying like, I I used to be so self conscious about a lot of things, and I mean, I still am, but you know, I do have my insecurities. But I had to realize that. My insecurities may be an insecurity to me, but there's somebody else out there whose insecurity is way more worse than how I feel. And I have to realize that, listen, April, there's no perfect being in this world. Nobody's perfect. You might see the best looking freaking um, Instagram model or a girl on Instagram, and you just look at her and you'd be like, oh, she's so pretty. I wish I looked like her. But do you really know what she looked like when she unfiltered that picture, when she take off all of that makeup, when she when she take her clothes off? You don't know what she really looks like. That whole persona that you see right there could just be a fucking mirage. You know what I'm saying? Like a mirage in a desert. It's fake. It's fake. You don't know who she really is. And on top of that, even if she is still that beautiful when she takes off all of this and unfilters it, her personality inside may be a million times worse. That it's just really so ugly that she don't even look at the beauty on the outside. You know what I'm saying? I have realized that the world is made up of so many different people. And it's uh, it's sad. But I guess, like I said, that's what makes the world go around. Because if we were all the same, it just wouldn't be a world. It would just be some boring world where everybody just walks around and it's just a boring ass world. So it, it does make the world go around, but I have realized over the years of being so insecure about myself and about the my looks and about what people think. The main thing was about what people think. I have learned that, you know what? Life is so short, April. And why the fuck do you care what people think about you or think of you? And why the fuck do you care about how people look at you? Because, I mean, like, really? Who the fuck are you to be criticizing and talking shit about me, about how I look? Like, really? Who are you to criticize me? Who are you to say that my hands look ugly? Who are you to say, girl, your teeth are jacked up? Who are you to say that scar is disgusting? Who the fuck are you? Now, you know, I, I don't have friends because I just don't have friends. Like I said, I just try to limit myself from the drama. But also, I'm such an introverted person that... I don't know. I, I try to I try to build myself up to go out and hang out with the girls and party. But then when it comes time to it, it's like, no, 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 no. I'd rather just stay in the house. And that's just me. You know what I'm saying? I'm comfortable in my own surroundings. I really don't like to be around a whole lot of people because then I feel like I'm out of my, my you know, my vibe. I'm just, I'm just out of my, my feng shui area. And I like to have feng shui. And I also like to be very comfortable. So you know, I don't have a lot of friends, but also I don't have a lot of friends because of a lot of different insecurity reasons, like meaning for one, I have children and grandchildren and a lot of people don't understand that. So those are my insecurities. And I try to keep that to myself because I feel like you're not going to understand what I have to go through at home. You're not going to understand that my daughter does this for a living or my son needs help with this. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to understand that. So those are my insecurities. And I just, tend to just like keep to myself. And then when I do find a good friend, they are really a good, truly genuine friend. Now here's the thing, Candy. You say you don't have any friends in a relationship. Those people that have bypassed you for friendships are people that you really probably nine times out of 10 don't want as your friends. If a person has to judge you from your looks and not your personality, then that means that their friend that you don't want to have. Unfriend that motherfucking ass. You know what I'm saying? Like you unfriend somebody, unfriend they ass. You don't want them as a friend. You know, words of encouragement, I don't really know what you mean in words of encouragement, but this is this is me. This is how I feel about myself. Yeah, I, I went ahead and I got my teeth fixed, my two teeth fixed. That's great. You know what I'm saying? I still have other teeth and I still have more insecurities. Look, I got on this tooth right here. 
I got one right here. So I have my insecurities, but the thing that I feel the most is I'm happy that I'm able to wake up every day. I'm happy that I have family that, that love me. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy that I'm able to be who the fuck I am. And I don't need nobody telling me what to do or running me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm happy that the drama is not in my life. And I'm able to distinguish who to be around and who not to be around. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's hard not having a lot of friends sometimes. And then sometimes it's not for me because I like my little world. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel pressured by anybody. But I tell you this. I feel like this every day. And I had to come to an agreement with myself that life is very short. And if we allow ourselves to be miserable and not be happy with it, that's exactly what's going to happen to us. We're not going to be happy and we're going to be miserable with it. And we're going to allow those people that are not even worth one second of your time make our lives miserable. People are cruel. And that's just the bottom line. There have been times when I haven't been so nice myself. But I have seen past that. And we're not always going to make other people agree with us. And we're not always going to be able to make other people feel the hurt and pain that we have. However, as long as we take our own lives and live it to the fullest and be happy, then fuck what everybody else feel and fuck what everybody else think about you. I could care less. There are many fucking bitches on YouTube that don't like me. And you know what? I could I could care fucking less. I don't give a shit. I know I have my fucking one who makes sure to thumbs the video down as soon as it comes published, okay? The video will be like 20 minutes and it been live for one. You got the video thumbed down. Like, damn, bitch, you didn't even give it time to watch it. That's fine because you know what? You're subscribed to me and you're still fucking watching. Regardless if you thumbs it down or not, I thank you for that view. You know what I'm saying? So, like like I said, there's lots of people on YouTube that talk shit about me or have something fucking negative to say about me. Oh, your teeth. Or you changed. You're not the same person because you got your teeth fixed. Oh, okay. I'm sorry that I got my motherfucking teeth fixed. All right. Still. But you know what I'm saying? I could care less what these f females or men think about me because you know why? At the end of the day, a bitch still gonna fucking be happy. A bitch gonna go sit her fucking fat ass down and watch TV and eat what the fuck she wanna watch. And my bill's still gonna get the fuck paid. So regardless of how much you don't motherfucking like me or whatever you wanna say about me, bitch, I'm still here and I'm still motherfucking relevant, okay? Yes, bitch, I'm still here and I'm still motherfucking relevant. So, words of encouragement are... Fuck those haters, and not even haters, because that's not even the right word to call them. Fuck people who don't want to be nice to you. They don't. If you, they don't want to be nice to you, then those are the type of people you want to stay far, far away from. If they don't want to be your friend, then those are the type of people that you don't want your motherfucking friend. You have to live your life to the fullest, girl. Don't sit around looking and waiting for friends. You got to go out there and meet people. Do things that make you happy. Sometimes we got to do things alone. But as long as it makes us happy, then we're going to be happy. But stop worrying about what other people think. I know that it's hard. You know You know what I noticed? That kids, kids can be so cruel to other children. You know, they say mean things. Kids are cruel. But in reality, the adults are just as cruel. When you're an adult and you're making fun of someone, you ought to be ashamed for yourself. Who does that? You know what I'm saying? You're an adult. What the fuck? My words of encouragement, sweetheart, are just live your life to the fullest and don't worry about what people think of you. Because at the end of the day, nobody's going to take care of candy but candy. Okay? Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> Names are changed, and I wanted to say thank you for all your realness. I often I often unsubscribe to YouTubers because they change, and you haven't. This is long, and I'm sorry, but you need to know. Now, this is a nine-year story of me waiting on true love. I waited nine years for this. My story starts in 2009. I moved to the big city for college and realized what I have never been comfortable with men and that I was a lesbian. So I jumped on a website, much like Facebook, but for the LBGTQ community. I gained a lot of friends that I still talk to, but I also looked for my type. I have a thing for Southern accents, so I looked for girls down South to talk to. 
Mind you, I was new to this. So if it didn't work out with them, I didn't care. I requested two females in two separate states. One I was more attracted to physically, Jessica. And the other was nice, Tammy. I ended up talking to Tammy the most. However, I never let go of Jessica. Needless to say, to Tammy, she didn't work out. Years went by and I forgot about the Jessica. I deleted the account, got bored, added the account, and added her back. We chatted, but nothing progressed. I deleted the account again. Boom, Facebook was born. Me and Jessica had no friends in common, but guess who showed up on my suggestions list? I swear it was a sign from God. I hesitated to add her, but something deep down always made me think something was there. But we lived 13 hours apart. I hit add. Now, at the time, I was in a relationship, so I never said anything. Years passed, but we never deleted each other. She would hit me up, but I would be cordial because I was in a relationship. However, after contact, my mind would always wander and wonder, what if? I never made a move out of respect that I knew she was in a relationship whenever I wasn't until two years ago. Again, she was now single and I was now in a relationship, but I could not remove her from my thoughts. She consumed me. I was in an abusive relationship with no matter my circumstances, cheating or entertaining isn't my thing. Oh, is it? I was in an abusive relationship and no matter my circumstances, cheating or entertaining isn't my thing. So I would dismiss her every time I got a message. Until finally, I got the courage to leave my relationship, which I almost did a real talk for two years ago. We should, girl. A year went by and I got my own place. Lost weight, mentally and emotionally healed. Bitch, I glowed the fuck up, okay? That bitch was bringing me down. To lose weight, I hit up Jessica because I had seen she had to, she too had lost weight and I wanted a way to talk to her. After drama with my ex, I moved out of state and back home. Right before I moved, Jessica messaged me, told me she would be, keep me company if I was falling asleep during my ride. Fast forward, six months later, we have been together with no title but exclusive and having the best sex of my life. I guess you're asking, what is wrong, right? Everything is good, but Jessica doesn't want to commit and backs up the moment we seem to get a little serious and always says little shit like, I don't want to hurt you. You might make, you might hate me sooner or later. I hold on to shit like that. So I'm like, why would you say that? The only way you could hurt me is by not being honest. Anyway, we are progressing and occasionally she will pull back. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I felt like I was coming down with something. I knew my period was coming, but damn. Nausea, hot flashes, body ache, migraines, cramps, and pain in my groin area turns out to be swollen lymph nodes. Now, I usually experience paper cut-like tears in my lady parts due to serious um, lubes, so I thought nothing of the pain. I dismissed it, but my period started and it only seemed to be worse. I felt like I was dying, okay? I take a mirror, I look, I have a fucking panic attack. Girl, I never had a UTI in my 30s. I immediately called my best friend and she showed her and we had the kind of relationship. She's like, let me research it. It looks like um, no STD listed. She tells me to calm the fuck down. I can't. I can't deal. So I go to the doctors and she tells me I have herpes. Oh, So I'm freaking out. I cried, I had two panic attacks, prayed, researched, my life is falling apart, and all I could think is, I've never had an STD. Jessica gave it to me. Now, now it makes all sense why I would hate her. So I tell her after a few days, and she's surprisingly calm. She had it and gave it to me knowingly. When I confirm it, she freaks out, makes me think she didn't know she had it. I asked her to get tested. She refused and says, well, if you have it, I most likely have it. So when you coming over, it's been three weeks with no sex. Now I'm like, okay, she knows she had it. I don't know if she gave it to me or not, but I'm sure she did. She says, no matter what, even if she doesn't have it, we will work this out. 
I just want to know your opinion because I waited nine years to be with her. I feel like, damn, this is who God wanted me to be with, who we've always been drawn to each other. We could delete each other years ago and never look back. And when we finally meet, we just kept saying waiting this long was worth the wait. But then this happens. I don't know how to feel. One minute I'm mad. The next I'm like, I love her, but she gave me herpes. This half of better give me a ring. Help. I don't know how to feel. Um, For your personal read. Okay, this is for my personal read. Wow. Okay, so the the last part was it, it was just like something personal. It wasn't like really anything. But you know what? So my girl here, she never told me what her name was in this. So we're gonna just we're gonna just call her Unlucky. So Unlucky looked for a relationship for nine years. She waited nine years for a relationship to be loved. She was been in relationships. She was in abusive relationships. She realized that she wasn't into men. She loved the woman with the Southern accent. She found herself two, two girls. One was Tammy, one was Jessica. She really wasn't into Tammy like that. But even though her and Tammy talk more, anyway, long story short, she ended up, you know, finally being with Jessica. Left her abusive relationship, moved back home to the state where she was from, and is in a relationship with Jessica. However, the relationship is like a relationship with no titles. Like, you know what I'm saying? So Jessica doesn't want to commit to Unlucky. She don't want to put a title on it. She's telling Unlucky, you know, hey, you're going to hate me one day. You know, I don't want to hurt you. You're going to hate me. Why would someone continuously tell you that you're going to hate me? Um, I'm going to hurt you. And did not tell you the reason why. You know what I'm saying? And all this time when she was in a relationship, abusive relationship, and I'm pretty sure that Unlucky was in an abusive relationship for some time because I had to make sure my kids was okay. They down there yelling and shit. I thought it was something popping. But here's the thing. So she, she, she's been in a relationship, an abusive relationship. Unlucky has been in an abusive relationship. And I'm pretty sure this abusive relationship was for some time because you just don't go in a relationship with somebody and then automatically it's abusive like that. You know what I'm saying? It builds up over time. So she was in an abusive relationship for some time. She was in a relationship with somebody for some time and it just became abusive. However, damn, it's pouring outside. She did not catch any type of STDs from it. So therefore, she left that abusive relationship. And right from that abusive relationship that she left, she went to Jessica, the one who she was just in love with, the one who she wanted to be with, the one who she's had her eye on for all of this time, okay? And then her and Jessica are getting close. They're having the best sex of their lives. She's happy, happy-go-lucky. Everything is working out for her. However... Jessica is continuously telling her, you're going to hate me. I'm not the one for you. I'm going to hurt you. But she's not giving reasons of why. And so finally, you know, Unlucky has, you know, she's going through some changes. And normally when you have herpes and you get stressed out by just certain things, you get a herpes flare up or, you know, it comes out. You know, I know this from research. I know this from one of my friends um, that had herpes. This is what she would tell me when she gets stressed out. She would have that flare up. So she finally finds out that she has herpes from going to the doctor. And when she tells Jessica, Jessica's not even a bit surprised. Jessica's not even upset about it. She's just basically like, well, you know, if you had it, why should I get tested? Because if you have it, now I have it. Let me tell you something. If I was a person that didn't have an STD and you just told me that you got an STD, but I know for a fact that I didn't give it to you, I'm going to be a fucking pissed off motherfucking bitch. So in my opinion, I understand that you love her. However, in my opinion, and I'm pretty sure my opinion is not the only opinion that's valid to this. I feel like Jessica is the one that gave you herpes because you was in a relationship, an abusive relationship, in a long-term relationship. And I know that relationship was long-term because like I said, abuse just don't happen within a week after being with somebody. I mean, maybe sometimes it does, but if you with somebody and you, after a week being with them and they abuse your ass, you're not in a long-term relationship with them. You're leaving them because after a week, nigga, I don't even fucking know you. You ain't about to be abusive to me. 
So I'm pretty sure that Unlucky's relationship that she got out prior to with Jessica was a long-term relationship. And if she was in a long-term relationship, then I'm pretty sure she would have contracted the STD of herpes had her other partner had it already. So I'm feeling like, you know what, Jessica is the one who has given her this. Because why else would she say, I'm going to hurt you or you're going to hate me? Those are words of, th of telling someone that I'm going to do something to you that you are going to regret, that I'm going to regret. And on top of that, when Unlucky lucky informed her that she got herpes and that she needed to go get tested all jessica could basically say was well if you have herpes that means you gave it to me so then now we both have herpes so when you coming over so because we haven't had sex in three weeks that means that she's giving it to you and she's already had it you know what i'm saying because if you got herpes and i didn't have herpes and you just now tell me you got herpes and I know that I didn't contract it from you, or I didn't give it to you, I'm not about to ask you when you coming the fuck over. I'm not about to be real cool about that shit because if I didn't give you herpes and she trying to tell you she didn't give you herpes and you telling me that you got herpes now, bitch, I'm not fucking with you, okay? First of all, I'm going to go get checked. And if I got motherfucking herpes and I know I never had herpes before, bitch, I'm going to cut your motherfucking throat. So here's the thing. You love Jessica. And I don't know if she really loved you, because if you really care for somebody, you have to be honest with them. And I know that that might be an embarrassing thing, telling somebody that you got herpes or you got some type of STD. That is an embarrassing thing. However, if you really care about the person and you really do have feelings for them and you really do love them, then you have to be honest with them in all aspects, okay? Regardless of what the shit is, if you was molested, if you molested somebody, if you raped somebody, if you stole, if you killed, it doesn't matter. If you have freaking skeletons in your closet that may really affect the person that you're with, then you need to be honest with them and let them know, listen, this is what I have, or this is what I have done. And I need to tell you now before you find out the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? What Jessica did to her, she didn't even give her an option to decide whether or not she want to have sex with her on those certain days, or she want to have sex with her in general. She didn't give Unlucky the option to make her own mind up, her own decision up. Like, okay, well, you got herpes. I don't know if I want to fuck with you or not. Because had it, listen, if I was with somebody and they had herpes and I was feeling them, I would really respect the fact that you told me you had herpes. However, if you had herpes, you told me that you had herpes, I don't, I can, I, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be real, cause it's real talk. I don't know if I would really fuck with you because honestly, I'm not really trying to catch nothing that I can't get the fuck rid of. You know what I'm saying? That's not fair to the other person. And when you love somebody truly and you really want to be a part of their life, then you need to be honest with them. She might have tried to give you little hints here and there, but she really wasn't trying to hint to you. Because had she been really trying to hint to you that she was really going to hurt you or you were going to hate her, she would have told you the reason why she said that. And that's the reason why she always continuously backed off is because she knew deep down that she had something that she already had and she could easily possibly give it to you now there's ways to work around this not saying that people that have herpes don't have relationships because they do they just know what to do to prevent the other person from having it or catching it and they know what to do and how to treat it however if you have a relationship with someone and you're not giving them that option then you dead ass wrong that's like somebody knowing that they have aids and they fucking you and they're not telling you and you catching aids that's not right you don't do stuff like that 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 is that that will fucking that'll have a person go the fuck off, okay? Let you fuck me and then you don't tell me you got herpes and then I find out later on about that shit. I'm gonna be so pissed the fuck off. I might kill you and then I'll be I'll have herpes and I'll be in jail. That's not right. But you know what I'm saying? Well unlucky, she she held it together real good and stable somewhat because she ain't talking about she about to beat this bitch ass. She ain't about to do this and that to her. Listen, let me tell you something. Unlucky. I understand that you waited nine years for a relationship and you waited nine years for this girl. I, I totally get that. You know what I'm saying? But if you feel that God put her in your life, that's not the case. Okay. It's not. Sometimes we look at a person and we get so infatuated with how they look and how they act that we really don't 
we're not able to see the true them, the true person, okay? And even though she was trying to tell you the true person who she is, you know what I'm saying? She wasn't able to. So when you think about somebody that was hiding secrets like that from you about having herpes and now she's giving it to you, you have to only wonder what else the fuck does she got going on in the back of her mind or what else does she have going on? Now, herpes is one thing, but AIDS is another, okay? So you really don't know Jessica like you really think you know her because had you knew her, and her being honest and opening up to you, then you would have knew that she had herpes and you would have been able to avoid catching it from her. And now here it is that you stuck with something that if you do decide to not be with her, you know what I'm saying? You're going to have to find somebody that's willing to be with you and you're going to have to be open. And I feel like this honesty is the best policy. And though that might be a very embarrassing thing to carry around on our shoulder to tell someone, hey, I got herpes. You owe that person, whoever you're dealing with, you owe them that much respect that you have to tell them that I have herpes. And that's because of Jessica. You know what I'm saying? Do you really feel like Jessica loves you that much? Because if she did, she would have told you. And I'm not knocking her and I'm not telling you to break up with her, but you did say she better give me a ring. Let me tell you something. Fuck a ring. What she should have gave you is honesty, okay? That's worth more than a motherfucking ring on your finger. Because she could give you a ring and still be a liar and a deceitful fucking douchebag. OK, so now here it is. You have to second guess her. Is this bitch really like true to her word or is she just fake and phony like the rest of these motherfuckers? And did I wait nine years for this bullshit? You know what I'm saying? So here's my thing. All she worried about is getting some sex and having sex with you. That's cool. Sex is good and everything and all that. But how about this? She really don't care about your pain and hurt inside because I'm pretty sure that that hurts. If I was to just find out that I had herpes and I caught it from somebody that I really, truly cared about, I would be so hurt and devastated. And I would probably be in a set of a mind state of depression that I wouldn't even want to fuck with her no more. I, didn't, I just wouldn't want to talk to her. But she didn't even care to ask you, well, how are you feeling? Are you OK? It's because she's still in denial and she don't want to admit to it. She didn't even take her ass to the doctor. So she's OK with not going to the doctors. That's because she's the one who had it and she's the one who passed it along to you. And she's the liar and a deceitful fucking douchebag. Okay. Now here's my thing. Are you going to continuously carry your life out with her just because she gave you herpes? Because that makes no sense. There are a lot of people out there who have herpes and have relationships with people that don't have herpes and they're just as happy. But the one thing that you don't need to do is live a motherfucking lie. Just because that bitch gave you something does not mean that she's going to give you the motherfucking world and a ring to put on your finger and be happy. Okay? From the looks of her, she looks fucking deceitful and fucking conniving. That's how she looked from the pictures you showed me. And that's just my take on it. Just from looking at her, you know how you could look into somebody's face and you could kind of like see their soul and you could just read them and just realize that they grimy? I don't know what it is about me, but I would tell my husband that all the time when he would bring his friends around me, I would be like, he's grimy. I don't know why you hang. You don't even know him. Yeah, well, just from the looks of him. And I would be right all the time. And he would come back to me and tell me, you know what, you're right. I know this. And just from looking at Jessica... She looked real deceitful and real conniving, and she looks like a liar. And I would be real skeptical and real careful around her, okay? Because you already since said she told you you was going to hate her, and you was going to regret it, and she was going to hurt you. And she did hurt you. She hurt you. That shit is something that you have to mentally prepare yourself for. Like, seriously. She gave you that shit knowingly. And that's that right there is deceit. And that right there would have me just leave her the fuck alone. I wouldn't want to be with anybody that knows that they have something and give it to me knowingly. That means that you hateful motherfucker. I mean, I understand people are embarrassed about having sexually transmitted diseases. I get it. It's part of life. But you, you don't do stuff like that. You have to let the other person know, like, listen, this is who I am and this is what I have. You can either, you know, accept me for who I am or not. Bottom line. So unlucky. I hope that, you know what I'm saying, you have a long, long conversation with her about what I just said and also have a long conversation with yourself, okay? And ask yourself, is it really, really worth it, okay? Because you got herpes. What's next from her, okay? So on that note, we're going to go. I'm about to go to Banner Health um, Hospital to get something to eat. I know y'all bitches like, why is you going to the hospital to get something to eat? Well, last week, my son, um, we was doing a video and I left for the day. I didn't left for the day. I left for an hour or two to go to the store, the post office. And when I came back, he, Wuzzle was laying in a bed. 
he had a seizure in the garage and he had this huge and not, I kid you not, was like this big on his whole head. And I was so paranoid. I took him to the hospital because I'm not about to let you lay in my house and have this huge knot. And he has seizures. Okay. So, and the, you know, the, the concrete floor of the garage is hard. So let me tell you, long story short, he's okay. Thank you for everybody for asking. He's doing fine. But that cafeteria there for the people that come there, bomb ass food. So that's why I'm going back. So anyway, you guys, I love you all. Stay deep and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys soon.